Hey guys, welcome back to the project. I just wanted to give you an update on all the cool new features uh, that were added to the simulator in the meantime. I think the last video I uploaded was a few years ago and many things have changed. Uh, most noticeably, I got myself the Flight Deck Solution interior liner set and while it's a lot of money for plastic parts i can tell you it's definitely definitely worth it the immersion is so much higher compared to what i had before because now every part of the shell is actually covered and i think it looks awesome especially if you have a few modifications and additions for example from uh, carl's nice uh, 737 diy uh, website I had a friend of mine print uh, some of the window uh, levers here. They're available on his website via a 3D file, so you can uh, simply, oops, simply print them. I have a few other parts uh, from Carl as well. For example, the lights here uh, were also printed by a friend of mine. And then I just modified them slightly to fit a uh, way brighter Osram bulbs, uh, 12 volts and really, really bright. They can be controlled via the map light panel here from Flight Deck Solutions as well. Regular 12 volt dimmers behind them. Uh, what else is new? Oh yeah, rudder pedals dual linked. I got them used as many parts of the sim. Uh, they came used and they're dual linked. So you can see the first officer's side moving. Uh, they are from Simojet, really nice quality. And they have a few weak points you have to be careful with uh, when other people are flying in the simulator. So make sure not to, to um, push against each other. So when one person is standing in the pedals, you have to be careful not to push too hard on the other sides. But with a few modifications, they're uh, back and running. Again, other than that, very nice. Those are real 737 yokes I found in the Netherlands many years ago. <laughs> Greetings at uh, this point. Um, they lay around for a few years and then finally I had uh, someone build a mechanism because I, I just couldn't do it myself with the welding. But they're now linked and I interfaced them and i think they're a beautiful addition to the sim really sturdy built like a tank and uh, as with many parts you just feel whenever you know, whenever some equipment is uh, as an original part same as the gear lever that's also original from uh, an earlier 737 model um, I also got a second uh, CDU from uh, Flight Deck Solutions. That one came used as well. I got it on the Prosim forum. Uh, both uh, still the older VGA types, but for me, they still do the trick. Mm, what else? Yeah, I had my iPad. Or I have my iPad now here installed on the side. It's just attached uh, to the clipboard. Um, it has a strap here at the back and I can just uh, attach it and it uh, holds in place <laughs> more or less. It's uh, way cheaper than a uh, RAM mount for example. does the job. Uh, I also installed a real aviation intercom here. Uh, at the moment it's not hidden, it's sitting up front here. I will probably hide it somewhere in the back at a later stage and have the headsets uh, connect via adapters and uh, cable that will run through the shell, but I still have uh, to come up with a working system for that. As uh, two aviation intercoms uh, will be connected at all times, so one for captain and one for first officer. And you also have the possibility to add two extra uh, units, for example, uh, the sidewall microphones or an instructor. The whole system is working in a way that uh, it connects uh, to ProSim and vPilot. 
with a USB sound card that's sitting inside uh, the pedestal. So everything you uh, you enter into the intercom or you speak on uh, the headsets will be transferred via a USB sound card uh, directly to vPilot. So I'm not using Prosim for the intercom function between pilot and co-pilot, but uh, the built-in circuits of the aviation intercom. If you already have it, why not? And uh, I've thought that to be more hassle-free. On the other hand, the sound that is coming back from vPilot and uh, uh, from Prosim is fed into the Prosim intercom a software and this way I can uh, control what's coming uh, out of the speakers that are sitting behind uh, the uh, overhead panels here one on the left one on the right for captain and first officer and uh, using uh, Prosim and uh, my my panel here I can control whether I want to hear everything on uh, the speakers at what volume or whether I just want to hear it over the headsets. That's working pretty well at the moment. Uh, except that I only have uh, one, uh, one panel here connected for the whole simulator and no separate panel on the first officer's side. Maybe at a later stage here, at a later stage, I still have one of uh, those OEM units that I will eventually replace this dummy panel here with. Oh, and you probably don't know the pedestal I got that used as well. It's an old uh, cockpit sonic pedestal, mainly. Uh, with cockpit sonic radios, they are working all right uh, in connection with Prosim. Just let me turn down the volume here. It's a uh, Palma de Mallorca tower you're hearing right now by a pilot. Um, so they're working all right. There's still the old uh, legacy five-digit uh, uh, version so whenever you want 8.33 kilohertz there's this trick that you just turn the knob twice and at the second turn you would have uh, the, the five here that's uh, not displayed at the moment uh, some of the panels here like a cell call or weather radar and the trim panel back there were dummies as well as uh, the a fire panel and one by one I'm starting to interface them with Arduinos and Mobi Flight in connection with Prosim. So I started with the fire panel, I finished that uh, these days. The inputs are already going into the Arduino and to Mobi Flight and then via uh, FSUIP C offsets to Prosim. For the annunciators they are also running via Arduino and Prosim, but because Arduinos can't supply that much uh, milli or milliamps for all the for all the annunciators, I had to use an LXD LED extension card from uh, uh, flightsandparts.eu. In the meantime, they ceased trading, but uh, Wendy was uh, so kind and sent me one of the um, extension boards they still had on stock. I modified it slightly because I already had uh, uh, resistors uh, connected to the LEDs uh, inside the annunciators so it's running on 5 volts and therefore it was the easiest part to just modify the LED extension board and get rid of the uh, resistors that were already built in. But now it's working nicely here you can see the fault test, uh, the annunciators light up uh, very bright, that turned out really good. And that's a real electromechanical bell sitting in the oral warning module over there. And they light up uh, very bright as well. All functions are working as they're supposed to. And that was a lot of work. I can show you the wiring if you want to. Just give me a second. So, 
This time I try to make everything as modular as possible. Usually I would directly connect the panels to the interface card sitting somewhere within the simulator nearby. But this time I tried to put uh, RS-232 or uh, DSUP connectors in between. So I can use regular cables that run to the interface and I can pull out every panel or the interface itself whenever there's the need for that. So I'm getting that out carefully now. And there we go. So that's my cabling job for the fire panel here. And as you can see, I tried to, to do some better cable management this time, still not perfect. Um, get the light here. Yeah. But I'm using white wire for the uh, positive leads of the LEDs and uh, this wire here for all uh, the positive leads of the switches and black for ground. And here at the back, you can see the D sub connectors. That's uh, 25 uh, positions or pins for the switches. And this one is 15 for the LEDs. For the switches, I just used a regular data cable I had lying around and modified it slightly at uh, the header here. But apart from that, it's the original cable. They're really cheap. And for the LEDs, I made my own cable here because I'm running more amps uh, for the LEDs through the cable. So in order to avoid any fires, I just made my own cable that's uh, a little safer. So you can see the mechanism of the annunciators whenever I pull. Then there's uh, the switch actuating either function. Yeah, and now we discharged the APU bottle. Okay, let's get that back in. Carefully with one hand. All right. The back side of the panel still isn't perfect. I had to cut it with a sort of a jigsaw myself, but I'm planning on building or buying a laser cutter. So that should be an ideal tool for those kind of jobs. As you can see, the cargo fire panel is uh, not installed at the moment. That's being wired. And uh, thereafter, I'm planning on wiring the evaporator panel here. Okay, that's back in safely. And I can show you the interface at the moment. It's uh, for testing purposes. Sitting loosely inside here, there's an Arduino. There's the LED extension board and the cabling mess inside the pedestal. So that's been, that will be done neatly within the next few days. And what else can I show you? Yeah, the seats are, at least the captain's seat is running on a open cockpit dray rail replica. So you can slide in and out of the seats. The seats themselves are old uh, simulator sort of custom made seats i found them used as well uh, don't ask me what manufacturer that is okay what else can i show you yeah at the moment i'm running uh, one beamer um, that will be upgraded to three i'm thinking about getting laser beamers in the future but the price tag of those is uh, about three times those of the regular uh, Optoma GTs. Let's see what the future brings. So here in the back, I found. Let me just let me get some light. I found this thing on eBay. It's a it's an old uh, cabin sort of separation wall between 
between galley and uh, passenger compartment sitting at the front. I don't really know what to do with it, but yeah, you know, some of us you just can't walk by. So there's storage room, I could use it for some documentation or whenever I do a live stream, I have my laptop for the stream sitting here at uh, this table and from there I can control the stream. So no circuit breakers at the moment, but I guess that's the next best thing. Another thing I did is uh, rebuild the whole floor structure. So this one is uh, constructed out of wood with a approximately one centimeter thick uh, base here so that uh, there are no bends and everything uh, is sitting very firmly. It's approximately 35 centimeters high if I'm not mistaken because as I need a lot of space uh, for the uh, yokes. I don't know if you can see them, it's probably too dark down here. Yep, that's too dark. But they need more space uh, than most of the replica uh, replica yoke systems that I have seen. But I'm still alright with uh, the ceiling and the clearance. Uh, although it will be a tight fit uh, with uh, three beamers, but we'll get it done. So that's it for now. Thanks for tuning in. And in the near future, I'm planning on doing a few live streams so we can uh, discover a few new sceneries uh, that I will be buying with uh, the coupon from Aerosoft. They were so kind to give me for winning uh, their home cockpit award. Really grateful for that. You can hop along uh, as we test it. Or if you want to see something uh, more specific about uh, the interfaces or uh, the technical aspects of uh, the simulator, just let me know what you want to see and I'll try to serve all your needs. So take care, bye bye and see you soon.